<laughs> you know. But again, Lagos has survived a lot of turbulence. In the, 18, in the 1851, in December, you know, the British just needed to conquer Lagos. Lagos was this hard not to crack, and they wanted to subdue it because they needed that vantage position to be able to compete with the French and the Germans on the West Coast. But the kings of Lagos did not want to be subdued. They felt, you are visitors in our land, we can't just let you take over, you know, and they fought. There were several battles. When the British realized that they couldn't really, really win, they had to mobilize um, gunboats on the, on, the, on the waterways. Of course, with approval from the foreign office in the UK, they began to bombard Lagos. And then they shelled almost like half of the town back then. 1851 it is recorded in the history books that that was when the british really dealt a heavy blow on lagos 10 years later with a lot of politicking and everything they finally you know took over lagos as a colony and that is that was the beginning of the british stamping its feet on the Lagos soil and of course they built all the politics and they were changing consul consuls every now and then bringing in trade bringing in christianity and all of that and so what, what we have as lagos now is a series of events and activities that have shaped the city um, so quickly to where we are going we have four places that we have identified we have four places on the day one you know and then four places today um, we are told that we have to wrap up at about 4 pm i think we'll be able to see them all before four it just means that we may not, may not be able to spend as much time you know in all these places but the very first place we are heading to is the Lufasi Park. Lufasi is an acronym for Lagos Urban Forestry and Animal Shelter Initiative. Lufasi. It was set up by an environmentalist in Lagos who was concerned about the fact that we are losing all our natural vegetation. If you look around Lagos now there's a lot of development going on. You know, and every time they need to develop an estate, trees are destroyed. And this guy felt we should try to retain some of that um, mangrove forest. So we are going to a place that is 20 hectares of preserved green area. And what happens there is that they have some, they have, they have different sections to the to the park. Um, we have an animal, you know, animal animal shelter section where. Um, stray animals are taken and kept over there. We also have animals that are being rescued from poachers, you know, and it's bought off them and they take them to that place. Um, we have two man made lakes in the same place. We have, um, we're going to go on a forest tour. The forest tour takes about maybe like 45 minutes. You know, there are several beds in that area, so it's an important bed watching area for bed lovers. Um, you can choose to sit down and meditate if you want. There are different sites for that. Um, but it's a, it's a very beautiful, great space. And then, once we are done, initially we had planned that we would spend two hours over there because it takes roughly about one and a half hours to actually immerse yourself in that facility. But maybe now, because we have lost an hour already, we probably will do about an hour. But that one hour will be sufficient for everybody to actually feel what that place is like. You know, and then on our way back, we'll stop over at the Lecky Arts and, Cult um, Le 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 Arts and Craft Center. Lecky Arts and Craft Center, it's where you will see all of the artwork, um, paintings, um, accessories like this, all sorts of little things you can buy as souvenirs. Again, I'm just going to show you, you can decide to buy something and you can choose to just have a look at the place. There's several shops. All of them selling different things that are filled to the tourists who, who want to have something to take away with them. And then we will then go next to the Nike Art Gallery. The Nike Art Gallery is the biggest gallery of its kind in Nigeria. It's four floors, or say five if you include the ground floor. Four or five floors of art from ground up. And according to the owners, it has about 20,000 pieces of art in that building alone. It's a beautiful place. You know, once you enter, you will get to see, you will feel the beauty as soon as you enter. If we are, if we are lucky and we meet Mrs. Uh, Madam, well, she's Chief Mrs. Nike Okundaye. She's about 70 years old. She is, she had the vision to set up a place like that. You know, she's into 
print making, you know, um, indigenous fabric making. She does tie and dye. And she has grown a uh, practice from just doing tie and dye on fabrics to also painting and then becoming the hub for arts and artists to come and you know exhibit and sell their works. I was saying if we are lucky and we meet her and she's in her usual mood, they are all going to be dressed in the traditional Yoruba style. You know, you wear um, the Agbada, there's something called the Agbada. It's like a flowing gown for the Europe body for the men. And then you have beads on. If you if you want, you can wear the headgear, and then the men will have the cap filler on their head. It's beautiful. She she tries to make everybody feel like a king and a queen. Because traditional Yoruba people, our kings, our traditional, I mean, even though I mean as 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 everyday people we also dress in the traditional sense, but when you now begin to have the beads and the necklaces and the fly whisk, you then become royalty. And that's what she tries to achieve. I hope we'll be able to do that. Even if not for everybody, maybe just for a few of us. And then from there, we'll go to where we'll have lunch, which is Bogobiri. Lagos has several, several galleries, several artistic spaces, and Bogobiri is one of them. Almost every month, there is an exhibition opening in the city. Unfortunately, many people don't get to witness it. And again, of course, tourists don't even know about all of these things. You know, um, on our first tour, we went to Art 21, where a beautiful exhibition is currently ongoing. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not on our itinerary for today. You know, the beauty is that um, Lagos, Lagos is so very um, heavy in terms of entertainment, art, and culture. And I'm not sure how much of Nigerian um, Afrobeat music you know. But you perhaps know of the Vido, of Bonoboy, of Whiskey, and the likes of them. They all have made the Afrobeat genre of music very popular globally. These guys perform all over the world now. And they have taken their inspiration from one of Nigeria's best musicians, Fela Anibula Bokuti, who passed away in 1997. You know, again, unfortunately, there's a museum in Fela's memory, but again, it's not on our itinerary. Um, and that makes me talk quickly about Lagos and, and how it is divided. This was supposed to be like one of my earliest, you know, um, share with you. Lagos is broadly divided into two broad spaces. The Lagos Island, where we are right now, and then the Lagos mainland. The Lagos Island is basically um, the more affluent side of the city. And then the mainland is where the middle class and the lower middle class and the, I mean, and the lower income people live in their majority. So sometimes you find us referring to ourselves as mainlanders and islanders. It's just a friendly thing, There's nothing, you know, we just have this kind of distinction. Nothing judgmental. But in terms of administration, in terms of administration, Lagos is divided into five broad divisions. Okay. There's a governor, of course. 